Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, Westchester County. It's February 7th, 2020. And uh, we're going to go into the quantum theory here. All right, something that I've spoken about a long time ago. Uh, I'm, I'm here, I can see that. But before I get into that, I just, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna give you some information on the kids of today. There, there's no TV with them, okay? I have two of them right now, here. My daughter's friend. The TV hasn't been turned on once. It's all iPads. You see, that iPad that you're looking at right now, that maybe you're watching me, that used to be called a light screen <laughs> back in the day, what I remember. Now it's called an iPad because Apple took over the technology. Oh, but he invented it. Well, how do you know that? You don't know anything. You just have it in front of you. Anyway, light pad. All of that stuff was invented a long time ago, 20 years ago. <sighs> I brought this up a while ago um, with uh, the plausible possibility of a flat earth and beyond. And this is going to get a little heavy. <clears throat> I want you to follow me on this. This is called the uh, double slit theory. It's not a theory, it's proof, actually. We had a couple scientists that proved it. Okay, but remember, this has something to do with vision. Okay? And what I mean by that is if nobody's looking at it, it might not actually exist. Okay. The infamous tree in the forest, the infamous bird flocking in the background. If you don't actually look at it, is it actually really there? Okay, this is Flat Earth and Beyond. The plausible possibility of Flat Earth and Beyond. Because Flat Earth is a catalyst. Okay? It's the beginning for some people. But then they have to research more. Now, some doctors did a long time ago. And what they were researching were electrons. Okay. They were watching uh, electrons go through a board four slits, or actually two slits. Okay, and they were shooting these electrons in there. And they were, had a board in the background, and it created interference of six or maybe seven bands. Okay. They didn't understand what was going on there. Because they thought the electrons were going around, hitting each other, and then exploding. It wasn't until one scientist decided to actually look at one and check out this light wave <clears throat> and investigate it. So the electron knew that it was being watched, obviously, so it changed its pattern. See, that's interesting. It knew it was being watched. It had a camera on it. So what happened to that electron? Well, that electron went into two bands rather than many bands of interference. So it's almost like if we don't, if we're not looking for it, and we're not investigating it, it's almost like it's not, it does its own thing. But once we actually look at it and we investigate it, does something differently. That's interesting. Because that's one of the ways I got into Flat Earth. However, these are things you're going to have to take a look at, and many people will. Okay. The funny thing is, is all of these researchers did this 50, 60 years ago. We don't hear anything about that anymore, do we? Nothing. 
Nothing at all. So the electron actually completely changed its pattern. <clears throat> and instead of making interference lines of like six or seven, it actually just made two. And it wasn't until we actually looked at it that it actually did that. So then I look at space, which doesn't exist, but I look at the stars, which, as I've always said, are an amazing light show up there. And that's all that is, <laughs> an amazing light show. So until we actually look at it, and we investigate it through a telescope, which, by the way, is two-dimensional. We don't have any three-dimensional telescopes out there. So everything looks flat. Maybe it just doesn't exist. And that that's what, what exactly I've always been talking about, is um, the plausible possibility of being on flat Earth. That it's a simulation. I don't know what kind of simulation you think I'm talking about. <clears throat> Whether you think you exist or don't exist, I don't know. But we're all made of electrons. We're all made of atoms. We're all made of molecules. These made-up names that they just make up, we don't know. So, I just wanted to give you something to think about on a Friday. But the more things that I observed are the generation, and I don't even know what they are. What's under, <clears throat> I don't know. X generation? Maybe, I don't know. But there's no TV involved anymore. They don't even know what commercials are anymore. TV's programming is coming down. They don't know what to do anymore. They have no idea. I mean, look at the programs that they have in the movies now. It's pathetic. It's a joke. What are we up to? What, what number are we up on the Terminator now? Yeah. Which I'm actually going to go see. I'm actually going to go see that, and I'm sure it's going to be a flop. They just, they don't know what to do anymore. They peaked. They peaked with the vehicles a long time ago. They came out with one vehicle, one combustible engine a hundred years ago, and they haven't done shit since then. Oh yeah, sure, go out and buy yourself a Tesla. That's great. That's great. They peaked with our cell phones, okay? They tried with the oiled screen, you know, and the, you know, whatever. I, that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for that wraparound phone that you could have, you know, like on the uh, Predator. You know, <laughs> you wrap that phone around there and you could touch it like that. Yeah, but they, they can't, they can't, they can't perfect that technology yet. They can't make it waterproof. They can't make it damage resistant. So they still got a little ways to go on that. But <clears throat> these cell phones are... Uh, so advanced, 30 years ago. This would have been alien technology if somebody found this. <clears throat> anyway, just want to throw my two cents in there. Uh, thank you for something. I thank you for uh, viewing my videos. Let me be a part of your life.